I've broken down the sections into the first section of simple interest, compound interest. Um, and I've also, I've also looked at the questions about the bonds. And I've got the questions about related to data handling. This is where we are. We are doing exam preparations. OK, we're going to start with the, the section that you have to get at least 100%, guys, because it is straightforward. OK, so now we are going to be looking on the critical aspects on how you can read these questions. These are coming from the past exam question papers. So this question, it's a uh, it's it's about um uh it's about simple interest. So uh here you are given a, 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 a an investment and then you are told it's an interest of simple interest. This one is straightforward because you are told that it's a simple interest. You don't need to think who go to what kind of a, a, a of a formula because now every time when you're analyzing a exam question paper you need to uh, to read the question and say what kind of a context that i'm working in you are making you are working with a discourse of simple interest so you know the kind of formula you need to bring in and then the balance in the account uh, in the 16, 16 months later okay so now this is simple interest we know you you need to break down what you are given you know that your p is equal to 1500 zero, zero. that is an investment the amount that you invest now and then the interest the interest rate is equal to 0, 0.657 i'm going to point you out to the common errors that you find so then you don't make those uh, common errors what the common error that you find here uh, people would write this interest as 0, uh, 0, 0, 0,657. That is a common error that you'd find. So be careful when you are writing the, you are converting 6,57% into a decimal, how you how you write it, so then you don't make that common error. And then we are saying the balance is 16 months later. And remember, if ever the time is not given as an annual uh, a time, you need to divide by by 12 because now the unit here is is months so now your time is going to be equal to 16 divided by 12 that is very critical in this question so this question is uh, is a uh, is highlighting those critical aspects of how you write the time if it's not given as an annual as a year as a year as a as a yearly rate, okay? So now what is a simple interest formula? You know the simple interest formula. It is equal to uh, P into one plus RT. So once you've got everything that you have decontextualized, you, you are looking for the balance that is the accumulated amount in the future. So this is 15,000 into one plus your rate there, it is zero comma, your rate there is 0, 0,0657. And then your time, your time is 16 over 12. You can just plug in into your calculator and then you find that your answer is going to be 1631,40. Okay. Okay, that is that is a basic simple interest uh, 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 question. So let us look on another one. This question is um you are told about the discount rate. So already you know you are within the discourse of discount. So you are already thinking of the formulas within the discount. So now you are given a discount rate. You can just write that and say I am given a discount rate which is equal to zero comma twelve, and then you are told that you need to pay the bank five thousand in six months. That is an amount that you need to pay the bank in the future. Remember, in six months' time. So you must be careful. But you don't write the present value as the future value. This is an amount that you have to pay in six months time. That means in the future. So that means this is your future value. So now this is, will be your 5,000. And then you are given the time. Also here, the time is not given as an annual, as a year. So now you need to divide that. Uh, it is in months. So you've got uh, T is equal to 6 divided by 12. If ever this was six weeks, ne? if you are told Guti in six weeks, you know how many weeks in a year? The weeks in a year is 52. So you would divide, you say six divided by, 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 by 52. 
OK, so the amount of money that you will receive now is an amount that you will receive now uh, from the bank account. So you need to be careful here. Get the correct formula. I will I will show you what is a common error that you find. So your P is equal to. Um, your P. Is equal to S into one minus DT. I will point you out on what is a common error that you'd find there. The common error that you find there is a. Uh, 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 is to write this formula as p into 1 minus dt because you are so used to what is happening here what is happening here okay so this is the common error that you'd find this will be your dt so you, you need to be careful not to get into this circular argument okay be careful because now you are assuming you are, you are using the thinking of the simple interest and then you come and apply it into you are applying it into a, a, a discourse of the discount. So this is the common error that we have identified. OK, so be careful on the kind of formula that you, you use. So your S here, your S here is 5000 uh, into one minus you are told that your discount rate is 0, 0,12 and then your time, your time is 6 over 12. That is uh, what this question is addressing. What are the critical aspects that it is addressing? Then you find that your answer, it is 4,700. So what I'm doing here, I am highlighting to you the kind of common errors that have been identified when you are answering the questions like this. OK, I am not coming here as your tutor. I am coming here as someone who's providing that critical eye, because when you are in the exam, you will be there alone. You need to be pulling together the different kinds of uh, of reasoning and mathematical thinking. So that's what I am doing today, not to give you the correct answers. OK just to show you what are the things that you need to be aware of when you are answering these questions. OK. Uh, hello, madam. I'm just curious to know with question two, uh, there's no way specified that it is um, simple discount. And when I when I think of a bank, I automatically think that um, any interest is going to be compounded. So I was just wondering uh, what indicates there that we need to use the simple discount formula. OK, you, 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 you remember when you are starting, you read the question and look at the components that are given. From the components that are given, that's when you, you know that it is implying that you are working with a discount formula because here you are told what is a discount rate. Automatically, you know that this is a discount of a, of, a, of a simple discount. That's how you know. All right, so yeah, but with, with banks and so on, would the interest not uh, compound over those six months? With the banks? Yes. But remember here, uh, as someone who is creating an, an assessment, I would uh, create my own story because I want to assess and put it in the context of the bank. But it is not what you'd find in a real life example if you were to go to the, to the maybe FNB or any other bank. OK, so whenever you are reading a question, put your mind in the context of the question and not on what you know is a practical everyday kind of situation. OK. All right, thank you. I will also highlight to you some of the questions whereby you are not told what is a compound interest, but the way you read the question, you know what oh, is a compound interest. So try and divorce your mind from what you normally do in your everyday kind of work and put yourself in a context of the question because you can create a story. Some of the questions uh, could be unrealistic and say a dog goes and and, and deposits so much. You know, a, a, a dog does not have uh, money, but you are just trying to create a context whereby there is a, a doing that is taking place in that context. You know? So uh, let us look in this context. This is uh, Frieda. 
uh, is borrowing the amount of 7,000. This is what she's doing. Look at the English. Borrows is a doing. It's a, it's a present tense. Okay. Just look at the English. Okay. She borrows. Borrows is now. It's a present tense. So you already know what this is your present value from the English. Okay. She borrows uh, 7,500 from the bank at an interest rate of 26% per year. I mean, where have you ever seen a bank that is going to give you so much? I would go today and go and deposit the amount. <laughs> if the money, if you ever can get 26% per year, it's too much. So it is just contextualized just to make an assessment. So you are told go to the interest rate. The interest rate here, it is 26%. So I'm already writing it as a as a decimal form and then you are told that this thing is compounded weekly okay without even being told what kind of a formula i'm going to use i know it's a compound interest because of this keyword okay and i know this thing is compounding weekly that means the compounding period is equal to 52 okay so uh, the amount that freda will have to pay uh, the bank and then we'll have to pay back after after 72 78 weeks will equal to you are given the time the time here is equal to 78 okay and I'm, I'm going to highlight here weeks i don't normally do that but i want to point you to something okay we already know that we are working with uh with present value with the, with sim, with the, with compound interest, so go and get the formula for a compound interest. Um, the formula for the compound interest. Okay, this is your formula. Ne? So, um, let us substitute everything that we need. So here, your present value is this. Uh, one plus I, our I is 0, 0,26. Okay, what is your M? The compounding period it is 52. And I want to come back to you. What is your MT? I just want to hear different answers. What will be your T? That is your N. What should I put here in this context? Um, it's 70, 78, uh, 78 over 52. 78 over 52. And anyone? So this is what happens now. Who just gave me an answer of 78 over 52? Yes, it's Mutsumi. Uh, yeah, it's uh, 78 over 52 multiplied by 52, obviously. Yes. Multiplied by 52, which wow. is simply equal to 78. 78, Danish. correct. Yeah. So why have I raised that question is because most of the time we are given that T maybe is equal to two years. OK, this is given in years. And most of the time, what we would normally do, what we normally do, we, 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 we write our N as equal to two over 12. If ever the thing is compounding, let's say it's compounding monthly. OK, so it is it is easy for for one to say since I am given 78, I am going to have 78 over over 52. OK, and leave it like that. OK, so you don't need to be in this case, 78 has already been given uh, that the time here has already been converted into into compounding periods because it's given in weeks. OK, so you could have put here just 78, the answer that you would have got here. OK, so this thing has already been converted, so there's no need for you to say 78 divided by 52. OK, so unless this was only time, it was only an annual rate and an annual compounding time. OK, so that's what I wanted to highlight here. Would be careful, would you? This is already been put. You are given it has been already been converted into weeks, so you don't need to reconvert it again. Okay, so here you would get the answer, which is uh, eleven zero six six point sixty. Okay, 
So that's what I wanted to highlight there, Uti. When you get questions like this, look if the time is already been converted so that you don't reconvert and divide by the compounding units. Okay. Uh, let's look on uh, another question. Okay. So here you've got an investment, okay, an investment of 20,000, okay, which uh, has already accumulated. So you can see what this thing is starting here and it has accumulated. So that is your future value. If the applicable uh, simple interest rate uh, is 12%, so now your I there is equal to 0, 0,12. OK, then the time under consideration. So this is a simple interest uh, 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 context. So you would get the formula for a simple interest. What is it that you're looking for? You are asked to find the time. OK, so what you do in these questions, break down everything that you are given, decontextualize it. So you know the formula that you are going to use here is S is equal to, your S is going to be equal to P into 1 plus RT. OK, um, your S is 45, uh, 200. Your, your present value is 20,000 into 1 plus your R is 0, 0,12. It's not compounding. It is just a simple interest rate. And then you don't know your T. So this one is a straightforward because you just substitute and then you substitute everything and then take your calculator, you find that your T is equal to 10,5. Uh, it's yes, so that's, that, that, that will be your answer. So this one is one of those giveaway questions. You just have to know which kind of a formula you're going to be using. OK, let's look at this one. Uh, Miriam bought a painting for 15,000. Uh, for 10 years, the value of the painting increased yearly by 20%. OK, thereafter, the value increased yearly by 15 percent. The amount of money that Miriam can expect to receive if she sells the painting after owning it for 23 years. OK, we need to get the future value here. OK, so this question is too busy. There's too much going on. So it is always helpful when you've got questions like these, you get the timeline, okay? So now let us get our timeline so then we can see how is the story uh, unfolds, okay? So here you are starting, okay? Because this thing has got so many uh, 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 periods, Okay, and then things happen somewhere in between. So now we are saying now you are starting. There is your present value at the beginning. Your present value at the beginning is 15,000. Okay, so now this thing, uh, it is uh, uh, um, it, it, it is 10 years and then you are told what your interest rate is increasing yearly. That is 0, 0,20. If I may ask, what kind of a uh, discourse is this? Is it a simple interest uh, discourse? Is it a compound interest discourse? Uh, definitely, it's not a discount, uh, a, 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 a simple discount. What kind of a formula that we are going to be to be using in this context, especially when we are looking at the interest? Because we are not told whether it's a compound interest or a simple interest. What formula would you use here? I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, let me finish the timeline while you are thinking of that. And then this thing at some point, OK, for 10 years, you are told what for 10 years, uh, this thing, it, it increases in value. And then you are going to have a, a few a, 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 an accumulated amount for 10 years. This is 10. OK, for 10 years. And then this thing is going to from from this time until here, it is 23. OK, so now if ever this from this period to that period is 10, that means 23 minus this period. If you've got 23, OK, you've got 23 years. For the whole period, this is 23, and then you subtract this is 10. 
Okay, so now if you've got 23 for the whole period of the of the value of this investment in this painting, and then if you subtract 10, you are going to be left with 13. So this period, this one, the T here is going to be equal to 10. No, 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 no. Is it 10? 23 minus 10 is going to be equal to 13. So for this second period, I am going to have T is equal to 13. Let me get a different uh, color. And here you are told, Guti, thereafter, after this period, this thing increased yearly. So you've got a second interest here. Uh, let's let's say this one is I1. So you've got a second interest during this period of 13 years. So your I2 is equal to 0, 0,15. And you are told that it is increased yearly. Okay. So now you've got that and then you've got that. And then remember, here you've got the accumulated amount from the previous, uh, 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 from 10 years. From this time, you've got a new present value. The present value that you are going to start with is the same as the accumulated uh, amount here. Whatever you've accumulated, you are starting afresh during this period. Okay, this is going to be your P2, and then you are going to have your final, your final accumulated amount at the end. That's what they are looking for. They are looking for this value at uh, at, at at year 23. OK, so now I've got all the components of my timeline. So now I need to break down my calculation from the first period. That means from this period, get the accumulated amount and then whatever accumulated amount that I have here, I am going to use it as the present value from this time until the end. So I'll be having two calculations. OK, so now I've asked you a question that what do you think? Uh, are we going to use a simple interest formula or a compound interest formula? I think we're going to use the simple interest formula. We're going to use what? The simple interest Why? formula. Why? Why do you think it's a simple interest? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyone who, who thinks we are going to use simple interest because the question is not clear. It's not telling us whether it's simple interest or it's compound interest. Why would you just think, OK, let me try a simple interest formula? Um, it's it's interest upon interest. You've got the first interest, you've got the second interest, so it has to be compound interest. It's compound interest because um, it is compound interest, but your reasoning, I can be having a simple interest here for the for the first 10 years and get my thing and then start again. I can divide those things. It is a, it is not the, your answer. It is not the, your justification is not correct because I can have a simple interest for the first 10 years and then get my final amount start again in a simple interest account. I can still do that, but. Yeah. Look so at the keywords. It's not, it's not it's not odd periods. So the the period is one. So it means uh, the the compounding the, the compounding period is is one year. So but the, this is ten yeah, years here. Yeah. yeah, the odd periods will 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 go for simple interest, and then full year will go for for compounding interest. Okay, let us ask. Uh, Okay, let, let, let's assume, ne? let's assume we don't have this period. Ne? Let, let, let's forget about the second period. Let's look at this period only, the, the first 10 years. Okay. The first 10 years, what kind of a formula that we can use on the first period? Assuming we have nothing, we don't know about what is happening on the second, on the second period. So here, from this period to that period, what is the e a formula that I can use here for this part? From the information that is given. Because remember, something is happening. You've got 10 years, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What is it that is, is happening here? Every year. Okay. So you, you, you're piling up the, the interest. So it's interest upon interest is upon interest. So it's compounded. The, for the first period, 
the interest is increased yearly. I am assuming, I don't know anything about this part, but the keyword is saying T1, I've got a, a interest, it is increasing yearly. That means it is compounding yearly for the first 10 years. Again, it does the very same thing for the next 13 years. Every year it is compounding. Therefore, for the first period, I am going to be using compound interest because of this keyword. Look at the keywords. Let them guide you what kind of a formula you are going to be using for the first period, even for the second period. OK, so now because I can give you a question to say during the first period, the interest is compounding. Then I say after the second period, after for the next 13 years, you just put it in a simple interest uh, uh, account. I can do that. OK, but the, this thing is saying increased yearly. That means this is a compound interest. So we are going to be having two calculations. OK, for the first 10 years. OK, this is your T1. This is your T2. OK, the first period, the formula is going to be equal to S1 is equal to P1 into 1 plus I1 N1. I am looking at this period, the first period. OK, so my P1 is 15,000. OK, into one plus the interest that I've been told is 0, 0,20. Into my N1, my N1 here, my N1 is equal to 10. OK, that is the first period. So this is equal to uh, 10. And then I know what this thing it is increasing yearly. That means my compounding periods is one. M is equal to one. So I'm not going to put one there. OK, you can put if you like, you can divide this thing by one. So then you can show you are using this formula, this one, this formula. Uh, you can show that you are using that formula. OK, the one of uh, no, no. The one of saying uh, you've got your N your N is equal to MT. OK, so this is your N1. Okay. So you substitute everything into your formula. So now you get that your S1 is going to be equal to 928, uh, 928.76,05. That is what the value of your painting is going to be after 10 years. OK. After 10 years, you continue again, but the interest changes, OK? So now what happens at this period, you've got the, the new present value, which was this one. This becomes your new present value. You are starting because your, 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 your interest has changed. So now you are going to say, I've got my new period, which uh, I'm looking for S2. My S2 is going to be equal to P2 into 1 plus I2 to the power uh, N2, that is T2, okay? So your S2, that is the value that you are looking for for this painting. Your P2 is what was the accumulated amount of the, for the first 10 years. So this is going to be 9 to 8, 76 point 0, 0.05 into 1. The interest rate for this period, it is 0, 0,15. And you are told it is increased, it is compounding annually. So your M is equal to 1. I don't need to be dividing by 1. I can just leave this like this. And then your N2, it is equal to 13. OK, so now here you've got 13. You can say 13 multiplied by one if ever you want to convince yourself that you are working with the with this formula. You are working with this formula. OK, so now you substitute this thing into your calculator and then your S2 is equal to five, seven, one, four, four, six point fifty nine. OK. I will point out what is the common error that you can easily get into. The common error that people would make 
would be to take this amount ne, and add it to this one and say that is an accumulated amount from for, for, for the investment of the painting. OK, so that will be a common error that you need to be careful. Remember, you've already included this amount. This amount has already been taken into consideration here. So now if ever you want to add it again, you are getting into a circular argument which you can easily get an error if ever you do that. OK, let me see if ever there is an answer that is suggesting that. Comma fifty nine plus uh, nine two eight seventy six comma zero five. Okay, um, it gets you, but there is no answer. I was adding what I was trying to see because sometimes you would get an answer which is misleading. So you, it, it, it is this amount. Um, can I add fifteen thousand? I just want to see five seventy one. Four four six comma fifty nine plus fifteen thousand five eighty six. Okay, there is no answer that is misleading. I just wanted to see if ever there's no answer that is misleading. So what is important here? Don't get into a circular argument. This is your answer. You don't add anything. Is your final accumulated amount during this period at the end of your investment? OK, let us look at other questions so then you can be able to to pinpoint the areas where they, whereby they are tricky. They want you to think even more about the context. OK, let's look at this one. OK, so in this question, you are told that uh, Lulu deposit 900 into a, into a savings account, which is earning this compounded quarterly. So we know what you are working with a compound interest here. So now we don't need to be to, 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 to be asking ourselves any question. And then after three and a half years, ne, uh, she withdraws 1000 from the account and deposits it into another account paying 11% interest rate per, per year, compounded semi-annually. How much is the total amount accrued from both accounts? Okay, so let us see this story in the timeline. Okay, this is what is happening. Okay, here is the, there are two accounts here. One, think of it as f and B. Another one, think of it as it is capital. But she starts with f and B, whereby she deposits, that is your, your, your present value here, okay? Your present value here is equal to 900, okay? In f and B, this is f and B account. Ne? And then this thing, it is earning an interest of 0, 0,065 and then you are told it is compounding quarterly that is your m is equal to 4 and then you are told uguti um uh, after 3 years that means um this thing runs um after 3 years ne uh, uh, somewhere here okay 40 is equal to 3 OK, she withdraws. OK, I'll put here withdrawal. She withdraws um, 1000 rand. From the account, OK, the money would have run for three years and you would have accumulated an amount. Let us say there's an amount that it accumulates at, uh, at three. When you go to her account, she's going to find an accumulated amount, OK? Then that is going to be your 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 S one, but from the accumulated amount, she decided to put. I am going to withdraw one thousand from whatever was accumulated, but she does not close this account. Yeah, she goes to F and B. Okay, she goes to to Capitec. Okay, she goes to Capitec. And take this 1,000, okay? She goes and takes this 1,000 
Then I'm going to say uh, she's got a, a present value of 1,000. She's opening a new account, okay? And then this account, you are told, Guti, it is earning an interest of, um, uh, this this account is going to have um, is accumulated amount. It's a different account. I'm going to put star because these are different accounts. Okay, so this one is going to run um, uh, for two years. Lay account account as a capital. It is for two years. Okay, uh, after making it a second deposit. So now your T here is going to be for, for two years because it is running from this period uh, 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 parallel to, 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 to this first one. So Capitec is running during this period for two years, okay? This is Capitec, okay? So this interest account, Lese Capitec, its interest is equal to 0, 0,11, and you are told, Guti, it is compounding uh, semi-annually, remember semi-annually, your M is 2, okay? So this is your S2. We don't know what is the value of this one. And then let us go to a FNB. A FNB, uh, she takes out 1,000 and put it here. The account as a FNB does, is not closed. It continues. It continues with whatever amount that is left after she has withdrawn. Let her, it is continuing uh, for, this is your T1, it is continuing for, for, for two years, okay? So it is going to have an accumulated amount. I'm not going to put a star, I'm going to leave it like that as S2. So now she's going to be having, now we are looking for, uh, the accrued amount from both accounts. What is happening? We are looking for S2 plus this one from those two accounts, okay? So now what we need to do now, we need to have two calculations. First thing first, we need to know what was the accumulated amount at, at FNB after three years when she withdraws. And then what is an amount that she continues with at an FNP account, and then what is an accumulated amount of the amount that is left at 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 at, at, at FNP? She goes to Capitec. She continues uh, from this period. She continues with the one thousand with different uh, 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 conditions. There's going to be an accumulated amount. The total amount is going to be this and that. Okay. Let us go to FNP. Okay. At FNP, we need to calculate our S one. We are told it is compounded quarterly. So now we are going to start with F and B. Okay. Uh, am I going to have enough space here? I don't know. Let's go to F and B. Okay. At F and B, I know that my S1 is going to be equal to the present value is 900. Okay. One plus the interest rate, it is 0, comma. 0, 0.65. This thing is compounding uh, uh, um, uh, quarterly. And then the time for this period, I'm calculating for this period, it is 3 multiplied by 4. Remember, MT, it is 3 multiplied by 4. That is, I'm looking for my S1. Okay. I, lo I am looking for my S1. Okay. I plug everything into my calculator and I get that uh, my S1 is equal to 1127,8474. I'm going to leave it to the to four decimal places because I don't want to be making errors. You know? So then when I go to my answers, at least I can um, I, I can get an answer which is closer to my answer. So that's why I'm leaving this thing to four decimal place. OK, so now remember at S1, she uh, she takes 1000 from this amount. OK, she takes 1000 from this amount and then she goes to deposit it. This is going to be Peter. She goes and deposit here. OK, so now this is going to have my P2, the new P2. OK, so my P2 at, uh, at, uh, at FNP is going to be equal to 1127,8474 
minus 1000. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 127,85. Okay, this is the amount that she is going to continue investing for the next two years at FNB. Okay, let us finish and see what is an accumulated amount at, at FNB. I'm still at FNB. So now at FNB, I am looking for the accumulated amount S2. Okay, what is my new present value starting here? I am only left with 127 because I've taken, she has taken, not me, Lulu, she has taken 1000 and deposited at Capitec. So she's left with 127. So it's going to be 127. The conditions at FNP have not changed. She is still uh, earning the interest of 0, 0,065. Uh, it is a, 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 a compounding quarterly. And then it is running for only two years. So I'm going to have two multiplied by four. That is a quarterly, a, 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 a compounding period for, for quarters. Okay. So I take this and I plugged it into my calculator. So my FNP account is her FNP account is going to have accumulated 145,44. So we are done with FNP. Okay. Let us go and see what is happening at Capitec. Okay. At Capitec for two years, she's got a 1,000. OK, I'll, I'll put it here. I'm going to say now I am at Capitec. OK, I am at Capitec. At Capitec, this is what happens. I've got this, uh, 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 this 1,000 I'm starting with. So I'm going to say what is a new accumulated amount at Capitec? I've put it as a star. OK, so the present value at Capitec is what you are starting to deposit. That is your 1,000. So you've got 1,000 into 1 plus. The interest rate at Capitec, it is 0, 0,11. You've got 0, 0,11. However, Capitec have got different um, have got different conditions. This thing, it is compounding semi-annually. So I'm going to have 2. And then the period is 2 multiplied by 2. OK? Remember the formula? Your N is equal to MT. OK, that is the compounding period multiplied by the time. OK, so that's what I'm going to get at FNP. OK, at FN, at Capitec, by the way, at Capitec, I am going to get one, two, three, eight, comma, eighty two, forty seven. OK, so remember what was the intention you wanted to get the final amount at FNP, you want to add it to the final amount at, um, at Capitec. So you are going to have to add those two amounts. Okay, you need to add those two amounts. That means you are going to have this. You add it to what you are left with, what happened at, at FNP with this for you to get the, the, the accrued amount or the total amount of the accrued from both periods. So if you add this, okay, and that what you, you have accrued at FNB and Capitec, you will get that your accumulated amount, your accumulated amount is going to be 1384,27. Okay, so this will be your accrued amount. So this is a powerful question which is emphasizing a use of uh, a use of a timeline. A timeline is very critical. Okay, let me try and move quicker because we we need to be spending time on bonds. Okay, because bonds is also using lots of timelines. Okay, so this one is a very powerful question, which is highlighting the use of timelines. You break down the information according to what happens when and where. All right. I am proceeding. OK, so here you've got a simple interest rate. You are given a simple interest rate. Uh, you are told that it is equivalent uh, to a simple discount. So now you are looking at the simple interest. OK, it's a simple interest. 
uh, and, and equivalent to a simple discount. Once you've got a question like that, you know the formula that you have to use. This is the formula which is relating a simple interest to a simple discount. OK, you know, this is going to give you that relationship. OK, so now in this relationship, you are asked to find uh, this thing is looking for the time. So now what is the simple interest here? A simple interest. Remember, your simple interest is equal to 0, 0,24. And then your simple discount, your simple discount is given as 0, 0,205. OK, so you are asked to find the time. You know the formula. Why you know the formula? This is guiding you. Always look for the keywords. The keywords are guiding you on what kind of a formula. It's a simple rate, rate equivalent to a simple discount rate. So this will be the formula. So your R there is 0, 0,24. Your simple discount, it is 0, 0,205 over 1 minus 0, 0,205 multiplied by t. You don't know your t. That's what you are looking for. OK, so here what you do is just to rearrange. Uh, you've got 1 minus 0, 0,205. Uh, t is equal to 0, 0,205. I am not going to do the, uh, the, the arithmetic part. So your answer then it is t is equal to 0, 0,711. But when you come here and see you don't have <clears throat> You don't have anything that is suggesting in Togo T you've got T is equal to 0, 0,711. This is just a, a fraction, okay? It's a unit, okay? So what you do, you look at your answer. Your answer is required in days. So in this case, you're going to have your T is equal to 0, 0,711 multiplied by 365 because your unit is days. So you multiply by 365 and then your answer is 260. Let us say maybe if your questions, your answers were given as 260 weeks, uh, 304 weeks, and so on and so on. Everything is given as weeks. So if everything was given in two weeks, you are going to take this 0, 0,711 and multiply it by 52 weeks. So then you can get an equivalent uh, uh, number of weeks using that, uh, uh, that factor. That, that, this is just a factor. Your T is given as a factor. Okay. So now be careful on what is it that you are given so then you know what factor are you going to multiply your thing with? Because you can be frustrated. You get an answer, but you don't, you, you get 0, 0,711, but you don't see it here. Okay. Look at how is the units, how is your time measured? It's measured in days. So you've got, you know, within a year, you've got 365, you multiply by that unit. Okay. So those are the things that um, you need to pay attention to. Okay. Um, I'm going to come back to these questions. That is question nine. Let me highlight it. I'm going to come back to question nine. Uh, if we've got time, ne? I will come back to question nine. Why I'm looking at the time. And uh, I don't want to leave you without uh, spending time on the questions that are, are dealing with bonds. So if we've got time, I'll come back to the rest of these questions. OK, the rest of the questions that are dealing with um, that are, are working with our own nominal interest rate and all that stuff. I want to share with you um, uh, some of the things that we have identified to be uh, problematic. OK, the annuities and bonds, they are a bit problematic. OK, so I just want to highlight how you think around them. The, these kind of questions. OK, so if we've got time, I'll come back to the questions that I have left behind. OK, so now this is an annuity. OK. Um, uh, you um, how do you know it's an annuity? Remember the annuity, you identify it by looking they are talking about the, the number of payments. The minute the question is talking about the number of payments, you know it's an annuity, okay? And then you know the different kinds of annuities. It is based on the time. It is an ordinary annuity. We've got a deferred annuity. 
um, you've got uh, annuity due, you know uh, what kind of scenario. So we are going to be looking at this one whereby um, we will analyze the question and decide whether it's an ordinary or it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an annuity uh, 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 due. Okay, you are told that the present value of payments of, okay, you, you they are asking for the present value. You don't know the present value, okay? So now you are told, don't worry about this. Ne? I got this question somewhere. It was just interesting. Uh, the payments, you know what the payments is equal to 250, okay? They are made at the end of every quarter. This thing at the end is the key word of telling you that you are working with an ordinary annuity because of the end. They are made at the end. If ever it was saying they are made of the, at the beginning of the period, you know what is an annuity due, so then you can be able to know which formula to use. Okay, it's an ordinary because of they're made at the end of every quarter. This thing is compounding quarterly. The payments are made quarterly. And then for you are told what the time is equal to 12,5. Okay, so if you've got this, this implies that your N is equal to MT your n is equal to 12,5 multiplied by 4, okay, which is equal to 50, okay? So that's how you get your, your n, and then you are told in Toguti your, 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 your interest, ne? your interest is 0, 0,075, and this thing is compounding, I'm putting star, is compounding semi-annually. There's a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. Okay? Remember, what are the processes? Your payments, the compounding periods of your payments need to be similar to the compounding periods of your interest. Once those things don't speak together, there is a discord. They need to be the same. If you are getting payments every quarter, the interest should be made quarterly. So this is a problem. Okay? The interest rate is compounding uh, is compounding semi-annually. So what do you do in that instance? You get out of the space and say, I want to convert. Okay, I want to convert this. Okay, I'm going to get a, a, a different pen. Okay. You tell yourself, but okay, if I've got this thing, let me get out. Let me get out of this. I'll come back. I am going to come back here. Let me get out and convert this interest so then it can be made quarterly. Okay. Now the question is, what do I do? There is a formula that you use. You, I, I'm putting this thing in a box because you are doing a different calculation. You want to convert this thing. This is where you come. Because you want to convert this thing to be quarterly and come with a new interest rate. Okay? That is compounding quarterly. So the formula that you use, you go and get this formula. Okay? This is a formula that you get, um, which is 1 plus J M J M over M. Okay, this should be N. They should be, when are they made end of the quarter? Uh, this is JM. And then you are going to have uh, JM to the power M over N minus one. This is a formula that you use. 
Okay, you what are you doing? You want to get an interest rate that is compounding quarterly. So now your N here is your four. You want to convert this interest rate to become quarterly. So your N is equal to four. That's what you want to get at the end. And then you plug into your thing. You've got one plus. What is this interest rate that you want to convert? It is zero comma zero seventy five. It is compounding semi annually. Okay. That is your M, it is compounding semi-annually. And then you are going to have two divided. You want to convert it to four minus one, okay? So you plug everything into your calculator and then you find that the interest rate that you get, it is, um, it is equal to 0, 0,074.31. OK, that is a, a, a compounding interest. So now you've got the compounding interest here that you have compounded. Uh, it is uh, that, that you have just calculated. It is 0, 0,074,31. You have converted it. So then it it is compounding quarterly. This is uh, this is quarterly payments. This thing is compounding quarterly. Then you are done with all of the conversions. So what you do? You can just uh, put this thing to your calculator and say the present value is going to be equal to R, A, and I. And then your R there is equal to 250. And then your A, and then your N, you have already have your N. There is your N. Your N is 50. You've got 50. What is your I? This is your I that you, you've went out of your way to convert. Your I is 0, comma. 0, 0.7431 divided by 4 because it's compounding by 4 according to the formula. Okay, remember your I is equal to uh, your I divided by M. That is what you are, you, you, you are using here. Okay, I discourage if there's someone who's still using a scientific calculator, you are going to be in a big trouble. Okay, we are. You plug this thing into your financial calculator and then you'll get that your P is going to be equal to 8096,11. Okay, I have chosen this question because this question, it is highlighting the basic rules of annuity of having your interest rate compounding the same period as your, as your payments. Be careful of that. If everything is the same, you don't need to convert anything. You just plug everything into your calculator. Okay. This was carefully chosen so then it can highlight that critical aspect. All right. Okay. So this is one of the deferred annuity. This is another question that I wanted to also uh, 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 put in case. There is uh, someone who is still struggling with uh, with deferred annuities. Okay, so deferred annuities, you'll see it when you are doing the bonds that you are applying similar. Let me quickly do this one so then I can get into bonds. So now with a deferred annuity, this is this guy Fraser. He is 33 years old and has received the inheritance from his parents. He said he wants to invest the money today such that he can receive five thousand at the end of every month for 15 years when he retires. So now he is deferring this, uh, uh, these payments, these annuities for 15 years, okay? So now there are two periods in a, in, in a deferred uh, annuity. One is the it's a deferral period whereby you are not getting any payments or you're not making any payments. Then after a specific time, the annuity start to pay off. OK, so now you need to be calculating into two periods. Let us have the timeline. So this is the power of the timeline, guys. OK, this is the power of the timeline. OK, so now this guy, uh, he's 33 years. OK, he's 33 years now. OK, um, for 65 years. So at the age of 65, uh, because you are told that he retires for 65 years. And then um, uh, if he hands 9%, so your I here during this pe period, it is 0, 0,09, and then it is compounded annually. So your M is equal to 1, 
and then 5% continue after paying out. So now for this period, okay, for this period, this, um, this, this year, um, is going to have a future value, which is going to be a present value of the ordinary. I told Guti, uh, if you can end this until and then after when the fund is paying much, how much must he invest today? Okay. So he wants to invest an amount today such that he can receive 5,000 at the end of every month. That thing of end is telling you, Guti, you are working with an ordinary. This is an ordinary annuity. Okay, so we know what he, after 65 years, he's going to be getting AMA payments, uh, the payments of 5,000, 5,000, okay? And then during this period, uh, the interest that is going to be of the ordinary, the interest rate here is going to be 0 0.05, and then this thing is compounding annually. Uh, this thing is compounding annually. So now your M is equal to uh, one, okay? Is it one? The interest rate is compounding annually. And then, however, man, the payments, there's a problem here. The payments, the payments, you've got your R is equal to 5,000. I'm going to put M here for the interest. However, the payments are compounding monthly, monthly, which is 12. Okay, so you can see in Doguti, the, 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 the payments, okay, the compounding period is 12. Here, the payments, the compounding period is, is annually. So there is a discord here. So it means you need to go out of your way and convert your interest rate. So then it becomes monthly using the same, uh, you, you using this, um, using this formula. You'll be using this formula to convert because this thing is not the same as this thing. Okay. I am looking at this period. This is the period that I'm looking at. Okay, so now here you you you, you are told what he, until age of um, uh, he wants to invest for fifteen years. So now sixty five for fifteen years is going to give you eighty. That means your T here, the the annuity time is going to be equal to fifteen. Okay, that means from sixty five, you are going to run for 15 years that's what you are told this is the information that is given to you okay so now how do you do e annuity you've got two periods okay you are going to start with this okay you are going to start with this to calculate for your present value okay of your ordinary annuity so i am not going to go through the process of converting this ne? You, you, you can use the formula that we've done on the previous slide. However, your new interest rate here that is going to be compounding quarterly after you've done your calculations. So what you need to do is to use this formula. Okay, you use this formula. It's an important formula to convert uh, your interest rate. So now you find that your new interest rate here for this period is going to be equal to after you've done your your conversion is going to be equal to 0, 0.0489, okay? This thing is going to be an interest that is compounding monthly. You are going to convert this thing, okay? You will convert it so then it becomes quarter a, a monthly and get this new interest rate, okay? So once you've got that, you can just go now to your to, to 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 your calculator and then you know go to your pv ordinary okay this is what you are calculating your pv ordinary is equal to r a n i okay which is going to be equal to your r is equal to 5000 you've got 5000 uh, a what is your n your n here is 15 okay it is 15 uh, times 12. Remember, whenever you've got your, your N is equal to MT. So now your M here, because everything is compounding now monthly, you're going to have 12 multiplied by 15 years. Okay. 
So 12 multiplied by uh, uh, 15, which is going to be equal to 180. And then your I, this is your new I that you want to calculate. It is going to be equal to um, 0, 0,489. Remember, this thing is compounding. Uh, is compounding monthly. So now your PV ordinary is going to give you a value of 636, okay, 925.79, okay. So now remember this becomes the future value of these periods, okay. It becomes the future value for this period. So now whatever you get here is going to be the future value for this deferral period. So now for this deferral period, remember you are asked here to find the present value. You are looking for, for your present value for that uh, he, he is going to be investing. Okay, so now your present value here, this thing is not a, it's a deferral period. There are no annuities or whatever, it's a normal a, 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 a compound interest formula. So now your PV is going to be equal to, um, is going to be equal to, what am I calculating here? Oh, remember, you've got your future value is equal to uh, P into one plus I, OK, this is I to the power N. OK, what is your future value? Your future value, it is this amount, uh, which is 636, uh, OK, 925,79. You are looking for P, OK? You don't know what is the present value, OK? The man that he must invest today, 1 plus your I, for this period, it is 0, 0,09. Remember, this thing is compounding annually, so I don't need to be worried by dividing by M or whatever. So now this is to the power. Uh, he's investing this thing as uh, 65 minus 5. Um, for this period, your T is equal to 65 minus 33, which is just equal to 32. So now your T there, it is 32. Okay, that is your N. So now your P is going to be equal to 4405.54. So now that's what we are asked to find. But what is it that he must invest? So you start with an annuity going backwards. So you are going to have two periods. So that's what we are going to be doing when we are working with the bonds. You are going to use this very kind of thinking, okay? As long as you follow how you are working with the de deferred annuity, that's what we do when you are working with the bonds. Okay. As long as you've got your, your, your timeline, put your timeline, look if ever the compounding periods of your payments are the same as the compounding periods of your interest. If your interest is not compounding the similar period as your payments, convert your interest rate. So then it can have the same compounding periods and then you plug everything into your calculator. So let us look uh, and see uh, how you can work this kind of thinking in the context of the bonds. There's no way you are going to miss these kind of questions. They are going to be there. OK, so now let us look on what you are given is a bond of whatever you are told that the coupon rate half yearly. It is a, a 14 percent per year. Write everything down. What does it suggest? That means your D is equal to, okay, uh, your coupon, which is 14,7. Be careful when you are writing uh, your, 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 your coupon. Half yearly, you write it as D, you use this formula D is equal to C over 2. OK, this is the formula that I'm using. And then you don't convert your 14,7 by multiplying or dividing by 100, OK, as you would do with your interest rate. OK, this is a coupon and then you divide it by two. That's what this thing is suggesting. 
okay? You are told the redemption date. That means your maturity date is that one. And your yield to maturity, what does it suggest? It is suggesting that your Z is going to be, I'm already thinking about my formulas. So this is going to be the yield to maturity over two, okay? So this is, this is the only one that you are going to convert and make it uh, as, a, as a decimal. So you're going to have 0, 0,135 divided by 2. So you've got those components. You've got the settlement date. Okay. So you've got that information. They are looking for something. The best way, I mean, it's not the best way. That is the only way. <laughs> so us you have a timeline. Okay. Let us have our timeline. There is our timeline. There is, is your, 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 your maturity date. Your maturity date is 1st of January, okay, uh, 2028, okay. That is your maturity date. This is your maturity date, okay. And then you have your issue date there that you don't know, wherever it was issued, it's not really your concern. This is your issue date, okay? So on your issue date, um, what is it that you know? You know what is somewhere, um, somewhere, okay? Somewhere there was a, a settlement date, okay? Uh, there, there were coupons that were were, were, were were sold that is somewhere here. I'm just going to put this thing so then I can have a nice visual representation of what is happening. This is 18th of April. Okay, I need the year, which is 2013. Okay, so now if this is 18, I need to get my half yearly periods. Let me see how I can get my half yearly periods because I need to get the date, the next coupon date. Okay, this is the next coupon date. I need to get what is my next coupon date. I need to know what is the coupon date before the settlement date? Coupon date before. Okay. I know what this is a settlement. This is a settlement uh, date. Okay. So I've got this. So I want to get my my, 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 my dates correctly. I know what this thing is half yearly. If ever the maturity date is 1st of, of January, it means the previous coupon payment was on the 1st of July of the previous year. Because I'm counting backwards six months. So it's, there's going to be a coupon date here. Is there going to be a coupon? There's going to be a coupon and so on and so on. OK, so now I'm going to have this coupon. Um, so here is going to be the coupons here. You're going to have coupons here. You're going to have coupons there. OK, so now you've got two periods here. Let me get my two periods that I'm working with. OK, I've got this period, this full half year period until the end. This is my first period. And then I've got this odd period here. I've got these two periods that I'm working with. So my calculations are, a go are going to be based on the highlighted periods. Okay. And what else do I need in this story? I need to have my R. That means the R is, is a difference between uh, the settlement date and the next coupon date. So now this is my R. I need to get my R. Okay. What else do I need to get? I need to get um, H. This is for my formula. I'm populating for my formula. So for my formula, I'm going to have my H. My H is simply the, the, the difference, the number of days between the next coupon date and the, and the previous pre coupon date before the settlement. That's all. So now here, I'm going to have my H. And I also need to get my N. Okay, let us get to those dates. Okay, 
once you you work like that in any of these then you know you can work with any bond so how do you calculate your r so your r is calculated as 1st of july 2013 okay i don't know what is that minus uh, 18th of april 2013 i don't know what is that okay so now you can go to your you can come here and look for first of uh, for 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 first of july okay so now first of july so now you've got first of july that is uh, 182 and then you also need uh, 18th of april 18th of april is going to be 108 so those are the uh, are the number of days we are going to be including here okay we are going to be including there so now first of july we said first of july when you look at that table it is 182 days and then um 18th of April, it is uh, it is 108. Okay, so now you are going to have 182 minus 108, which is going to be equal to 74. Okay, one thing that you have to note. Notice that your R is greater than or equal to 10. Okay. If your R is greater than or equal to 10, it means you've got a case of an accrued interest. And there are things that you need to do when you are calculating your all in price. I'm just highlighting this. I will take you through on what you should, uh, what analysis you make when you've got, just make a note. OK, and then you also need your age. OK, your age is equal to 1st of 7, 2013. We've already calculated it to be 182 minus um, the, 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 the coupon before the settlement was 1, 1, 2013. OK, so if you go to your to your thing, Okay, one of of first of January, it is just equal to one. Okay, so you go up, you are here. Okay, we are here. Okay, so this is going to be equal to one. So you've got hundred and eighty two minus one. So this is going to be equal to hundred and eighty one. We don't need to be multiplying by three sixty five because we are working within the same year. OK, there are instances whereby you need to multiply the date within uh, uh, by 365 if the years are different. OK, so now we also need to get our N. OK, how do you get your N? Your N, OK, it is this maturity date and minus this date, minus this date. OK, however, OK, However, in this instance, you've got um, you've got first of January, and then this date is first of July. It's going to give us a problem, so we are going to be doing our calculations. Uh, what is the next coupon date here? It's going to be first of January, twenty fourteen. Okay, we are going to sweep this period and focus from this period right through to this after doing that we are going to add one coupon the one that we ignored the one which is before this period we are going to ignore this one why we are ignoring is because the next coupon date after the settlement it is first of july and then this one is first of january it is going to make it difficult for us to calculate so now here we are working with the first of january and first of january we have skipped one coupon which we are going to add so our N is going to be equal to uh, 2028 minus, uh, minus 2014. Okay, so you'll get that our N is going to give us 14. Okay, uh, remember we are making uh, half yearly. So our N is going to be equal to 14 multiplied by 2, 
which is going to be equal to 14 multiplied by uh, uh, 2 is 28 half years. You've got 28 half years. But remember, there is that one period that you skipped for your own calculation reasons. You skipped. There was no need for you to skip. If ever this was 1st of January, you wouldn't have skipped. Skipped. So you need to take that into consideration. The half yearly that you skipped, you would have to add that. So then the end for your calculation becomes 29. So now this is everything that you need. You have done all of your analysis for your formula. Okay. Um, so uh, once you have done all of this analysis for your formula, um you are in a in, in, in a in a stage okay you are in a stage whereby you can now get your formula okay so the formula that you are going to get uh for your present value you say that your formula so the formula is going to be equal to p is equal to d okay N Z, okay, because now you are looking for the present value, okay, uh, plus 100, okay, uh, 1 plus Z to the power minus N, okay. So what is your D? Okay, go back to what you populated before. You said your D was equal to this, okay. So your D is 14,7. Remember, we don't write our D as a decimal, our coupon, and say 14,7 uh, multiplied by 100. So then we convert it to a decimal. We leave it as that. And then um, D, D, A, N, K, Z. This is the formula for a, a present value of the of the bonds uh, and then for, for 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 the coupon payments and then you've got your a into what is your n you have calculated we have calculated our n to be equal to 29 in this instance because our next coupon date was 1st of July, and then this one was 1st of January. So it was going to give us problem. Hence, we skipped this period and calculated this period and added the one that we skipped. That's a strategy. Okay. So now our N is 29. What is our Z? We have calculated our, our Z is just given. This is our Z. Okay. So our Z, it is 0, 0,135 divided by 2 plus 100 into 1 plus our Z, again, it is equal to 0, 0,135. Everything is coming from the previous analysis that we've done. And then, which is, um, this is to the power minus 29. Okay, so this this becomes, uh, it makes your life easy. You substitute everything and then you get that this, your first part, when you have plugged it into your calculator, is going to be equal to 92,50885. I am leaving everything to the fifth decimal place for accuracy. And then this part, you've got two parts. And then this part is going to be 15, comma, uh, uh, 0, 4, 2, 8, 9. Okay. So now our P there is going to give us 107,551.74. Okay. That is your present value of your annuity for your bond. But remember, okay, before you calculate your all in price, OK, you need to ask yourself, was my R greater than or equal to 10 or R is less than 10? From our previous analysis, we have noted that, OK? We have noted that our R was, uh, our R was, uh, was greater than 10. 
uh, equal to 10. So if your R is greater than or equal to 10, you are working with an accrued case, accrued interest case. So if you've got an accrued interest case, it means um, you need to add. You need to add one coupon. OK, you need to add a coupon to your present value. OK, you need to add the coupon to your present value. So your, your present value it is going to be equal to 107,55174 because of this, because of this. OK, otherwise, if you, if you, our R from the previous slide was less than 10, we wouldn't have to add anything. So now we need to add our coupon. Our coupon, remember, it is 14,7 over 2. So our new present value becomes um, 114,90174. OK, so this is the present value that you are going to be to be working with. OK, you, you had to add because now you are working with a cum with a cum interest. OK, because of the cum interest case. OK, not an accrued, it's a cum interest, uh, interest case. So now here you are going to get the formula now for the all in price. I'm going to be working on the same slide, guys, because my second slide has been messed up. So now the all in price. Remember the formula for the all in price. The formula for the all-in price is equal to P, the P1 uh, plus Y over 2, okay, to the power minus uh, R over H, okay? Remember, you are working with this P, the one that you've already added this, okay? You don't work with the one that we you, 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 you originally calculated. So your P is going to be equal to 114, okay? comma 90174 okay into 1 plus remember your yield to maturity is equal to 0, 0,135 okay was it 0, 0, 0,135 divided by 2 to the power what was our r you are still using the same information from the previous slide this was minus 74 divided by uh, 181, okay? I am pulling all the information from the previous slide, okay? So now this becomes your all-in price, which is going to be equal to one, two, three, okay? This is going to be one, two, three, uh, comma, eight, seventy-three, eighty-eight. OK, so now that is your all in price. You are also asked to calculate for your you are asked to find to calculate your accrued interest. So your accrued, I mean, now uh, your life uh, is easy. OK, let me get a different pain. So then uh, you want to draw. I want to draw with a different pen. Okay. So I've got my all in price. You are asked to calculate your accrued interest. So I know that my accrued interest, because I am working with a cum interest. Why do I know it's a cum interest? Is because my R value is greater than or equal to uh, a 10, which is equal to, it was equal to 74 from the previous slide. So I know it is a cum interest. So I'm going to use a formula that is related to that. And the formula for the cum interest for the accrued interest, it is equal to H minus R over 365 multiplied by C. Otherwise, you would have got the one, the other formula. So now what is your H here? Your H is 181 minus your R is 74 divided by 365. Remember here, your C is not half yearly 365 you are using the the full amount yeah that's why the formula is not written the formula is not d but c remember what is d your d is equal to c over two so we've got d uh, not c we've got c not uh, not d so that's why here you are going to multiply by 14 comma 7 and not divide that by U2. 
Okay, so now you are going to multiply by 14,7. Okay, so now your accrued interest there, it is going to be equal to 4,3. 0932. So now you've got your accrued interest, you've got your all in price, you can get your clean price. So let us get our clean price. Uh, clean price, remember the formula for the clean price. The clean price, it is just equal to all in price. It is all in price minus accrued interest. So uh, you, 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 your life now is easy. So now you are going to have this one. Okay. You are going to have this one minus this one. Then you have your clean price. Okay. So you substitute everything. So your, your, all in, your clean price is going to be equal to 107. comma 56 for 56 okay sometimes we find that is put as a percentage so don't worry about that what is important is for us to to be aware of the different steps so the most important thing when you are working with ama bonds Nancy, what i want to emphasize is when you are working with a bond it is important that you draw your timeline okay have your timeline in order then you 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 put your days uh, the way uh, 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 um. my my PowerPoint slide has been messed up, guys. My PowerPoint slide has been messed up, uh, but anyway, I I still have more exam related questions on uh, on bonds and also on um, what else and also on um, on data handling. OK, so I think I am going to have another session because now I am breaking down all the sections of your exam according to the specific uh, group of questions, a specific group of questions. I have not finished. OK, I have not finished the one for for the bonds because there are other instances. What if my settlement date is not in the same year as my um, as my coupon dates, that becomes an issue. We need to look at the exam questions that are asking and addressing the questions like those. So um, next week, I'll definitely include the bonds, the last part of the bonds, data handling. I will see another section that I might add for, for exam related questions. It is a goodbye. Let us see each other next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye.